What up, y'all? <clears throat> so make sure you can see me and you can hear me. Welcome, welcome to a Sunday night. Gonna have a good, a good program tonight. Have a good live tonight as we talk about the upcoming documentary, the Latin breakdown. We're gonna have a good a good conversation. So I'm just give some people time to get up in here. As usual, I usually wait for about five minutes. But if you're already in, please let me know that you can hear me well and that my visual is clear and good, not too dark, you know, perfect. We still haven't still haven't heard from you, Victor Alicia. Who who is it? Hey Victor, what are, what are you referring to exactly? All right, Victor, Alicia, what, what, oh, Kid Glad, what's up, brother? <laughs> I haven't forgot about you, man. I just been in the grind, bro. I'm sorry, man. But we'll talk. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely talk. So I'm trying to make sure my glasses ain't crooked like that. <laughs> All right, everybody can hear me pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. As usual, we're going to break down some information. We're going to have a great conversation tonight. But shout out to the chat, Victor, Kid Glide. Shout out to my man, Frank Rojas, who's in here. Shout out to Kojo and shout out to the moderator, Andrina Scasa. Bendicion back to you. Blessings back to you, Talim. My man. Blessings to you, brother. Good to see you. So, as usual, I just give people enough time to just get in. We're going to talk about a couple of things, we're going to talk about some definition and terms. Um, then I'm going to actually open it up for questions. Um, and, and you know, just to have a conversation tonight, I want to have a conversation, but I want to take you through the, and I'm not giving away everything, but we're going to take you through some of the aspects of the documentary, uh, what's happening at the, up to this point. And, uh, we're just going to talk about it, man. It's going to be really, really, really good. We're going to talk about Latin music. We're going to talk about the term Latin because there seems to be some confusion over that term, and what that means. And so we're going to just sort of do some, some defining tonight. But welcome again. Welcome. Please go ahead on your platforms and please share this. Like I, I need this to be flooded tonight. Like, get those likes up as well. The more likes, the more it goes. But I need this to be flooded. We are talking about a monumental event that is going to happen. So I need my Latinos to reach out to other Latinos to get people in this live so that we can have a, 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 a very beautiful conversation tonight. Right? <clears throat> Yes, yes, yes. Hulk 70, 77. Ah, uh, one of my members. Thank you, brother, for your membership. Sorry I haven't been on to really be doing things. I'm just so busy with this with this documentary. So, you know, but I do appreciate your membership. And once again, please go into your platforms, whether that is TikTok, whether that is Facebook, whether that is Instagram. Um, just start blasting people, letting people know that we are live and we are talking about the upcoming documentary called The Latin Breakdown. 
So I need you to just reach out to reach out to re reach out to people that you know would would enjoy a conversation like this. Reach out to people that you know have been waiting for a conversation like this. Just start tagging people. Go ahead and do that, man. Take a couple of minutes. Let's just take a couple of minutes. I'm at the five minute mark, but I want I want you to take a couple of minutes. I need this thing to start getting flooded. We want to get some more people up in here. I want to wait till we get to about 25 people at least um, to, to even get going. But So let's get it in, man. Go ahead. Start sharing on your timelines. Start sharing on your platforms. All right? Do me that favor. Do me that favor. And don't forget, hit that like button. All right? If you are in the chat currently and you haven't hit the like button, go ahead and smash that like button. Also, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free. There's no obligation to this. Just hit that subscribe button. And um, yeah, 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 we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. So I'm going to give people, I want to get till about the 25 mark, till about 25 people are up in here. But go ahead and share and share and share. Tell them. Dr. Cologne is talking about... <coughs> <clears throat> the Latin breakdown tonight. Let's get it in. Got my water. And once I start conversating, once I get to like where I want you to ask questions, then, you know, I'll go back and forth. <clears throat> As usual, let's keep it respectful. Let's keep it, um, you know, civil. No matter what side of the fence you're on, no matter where you stand, let's keep it, you know, simple, physical, um, not physical, but let's keep it simple, right? Uh, so, you know, to my moderator, there is no chances tonight, the minute that we get somebody who is being disrespectful, okay, there is no time out for them. Just get them out of here. This is going to be a positive conversation. Now, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to, you know, asking tough questions, objections, <clears throat> not agreeing with something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know, racial innuendos. And I'm saying whoever that might be. So my moderator, whoever that is. OK, I need you to I'll give it a break. I need you to issue a warning. Issue one warning to that person to keep it civil. And if they do it again, get them out of here. All right, that's what we're going to do. Taino Kings, Mother Chapter. What's up, my brother? God bless you. And God bless everybody in the chat. As always, I want to give, you know, thanks to my Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ, that needs to be, as I always begin with that, that is my foundation, that is where I begin with, and so, you know, I just want this to be um, a positive conversation tonight. So we have 15, we have 15, let's get those likes up, um, and Andrina, if you could please go ahead and refer people again to the Cash App, if you could refer people again to the um, to the YouTube channels, both YouTube channels. If you could refer people again to um, what else? What else? What else? To your channel. Let people know what you're doing and who you are. All right, see los congas. What's up, my brother? Salute, salute, salute. So we we haven't started yet. We're just waiting for people to trickle in. Getting people on the inside. Go ahead and start sharing this on your platforms. Also, Andrina, if you could also put the link to the trailer for the documentary up. And I know you're a genius and a wizard at just finding things. If you could put that, that link up so people know about that. Yes, the son of the ghetto. Don't forget. That book, Son of the Ghetto, my story, there's nothing like you can't argue with somebody's life experience. And so that book tells my story. If you've not copped that book, please help support by picking that up. The link is here. Amazon, let it, let, let it, 
you know, let the story speak for itself. Um, just a great, a great story. And so, again, we're just going to give some people some time. Once again, if you are in the chat right now, go ahead and start promoting this on your platforms. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. <clears throat> we are going to be talking about the Latin breakdown. We're going to be talking about the we're going to be talking about the documentary. We're going to be talking about the word Latin. We're going to be talking about the Latin breaks and what does that constitute? What does that mean? All right. So, yeah, man. And for those of you that have seen the trailer, for those of you that have watched it, the trailer link is right there below. I want you to please um, also, once we're done, I want you to just share that link with everybody that you can think of that would, that would benefit from, uh, what's going on. All right. <clears throat> bang, bang, boogie. What's up, my man? Let's get those likes up, y'all. Come on, y'all. We got, we got, we got 19 up in here. Let's get it up to 25. Let's just start promoting, sharing TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know, wherever you have, um, you know, Twitter, which I think is called X now, go ahead and start sharing. Go ahead and start sharing. Go ahead and start sharing. All right. We are going to break it down today. So I'm going to give it a couple of more minutes and, uh, and then we're just going to get it in. We're at 20. Let's get those likes up. Go ahead, y'all. Start smashing that like button. Thank you for tuning in tonight. It's been a while since I've been here. Um, but you know, again, been busy, been on the grind, been some good busyness as, uh, you know, been just keeping myself focused on this all important documentary. So we're going to go ahead. I'm, a, I'm all right. We had 21. Let's get it. We need, we need four more. We need four more. I had to count that out. We need four more to get to 25, y'all. Come on, let's share, 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 share. Like, 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 like. Let's get it up. Let's get it up. We want people up in here to hear this information. <clears throat> I'm calling on the Latino community. I'm calling on the hip hop community. Um, those of you who are considered pioneers, calling on you, enter this conversation. This is a vital conversation. Okay. And much respect to the moderator, Andrina, who has been a source of inspiration. She has been a source of um, just, you know, knowledge. She's been a source of um, um, unity. You know, th this is a, this is a woman who I can count on and I just appreciate her so much. All right. So much. Dynasty Chantel. What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome to welcome to hip hop history, origins and elements. Let's get it in. Dynasty, if you could go ahead and you can share that we are live on your platforms, get people to just tune in as we talk about probably one of the most important documentaries on the topic of hip hop to date to date we we go into the weeds and we're going to we're going to talk about the first documentary and we're going to talk a little bit about this one we're going to talk about some some history some music all of that but thank you so much guys for tuning in thank you so much for tuning in go ahead share 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 i know i've been saying i'm going to get it in let's wait we're going to wait until the 15 minute mark so if you <clears throat> We're at 24, y'all. We need one more to get it in. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get those likes up, though. Get those likes. If you didn't know this, hitting that like button also shares the algorithm. So people, you know, on this topic of hip hop, on the topic of the Latin breakdown, um, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're there. We're almost there. So go ahead and just start sharing TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, X or Twitter. Uh, let's go. Let's go. I'm going to talk about some things tonight. Thank you, people in the chat. Uh, thank you, people in the chat. 
Okay, Dominic. Welcome, Dominic. Not sure what you mean, Dominic, but, you know. All right, we're there. We're at 25. Here we go. Where we're at 25. So, tonight, we're going to talk about the Latin breakdown. Hip-hop's Latino Connection, which is the upcoming documentary that's coming in spring of 2024. And that is, I'm going to say it again. This is one of the most important documentaries to date, done by an independent filmmaker, myself. And it is not something to be taken lightly. We are going deep into the weeds with this. We are going to have some phenomenal interviews with people um, in that documentary, you know? So I can't stress it enough, but go ahead again. And, and if you haven't seen the trailer for the documentary, when we're done, it's in the link, but you can go to the channel and check out the trailer. Please share the trailer. And we're going to go through a little bit of the trailer, actually. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just pull out my iPad and I'm going to go to my page. I'm not going to try and show it from my page, but I want to um, just sort of talk a little bit about what it is we're hearing from people when they're talking on it. Miles, what's up, man? Welcome to the channel again. Welcome, y'all. Listen, again, no matter what side of this fence that you see yourself on, if you see yourself on the side of, you know, I don't agree with this dude, that's fine. And I respect that. But I'm asking everyone on either side of this conversation to please be respectful. Okay, please be respectful. And so we're going to just, I'm going to just actually just play a little bit. Um, I'm going to play the trailer, but I'm going to just sort of stop it and get into some explanations. I got my man, Ray Pinky Velasquez, who is on. What's up, Pinky? Def Rocker, what's up? Peace to you. <clears throat> so here we go. Let's, let's get it in. Well, obviously that's not it. It's a commercial. And here we go. A certain sound, a certain movement to that sound. But this goes back to the plena, goes back to the bomba, goes back to the danza. I'm saying, go back to Palenque, go back to all, all these Latin, these Afro Latin, Afro Caribbean movements. All right, so we begin the trailer with my man Randy, who is um, speaking about the sound. And that is really what the documentary is focusing on. It is the foundation of hip hop's culture. So as quiet as it's kept, the foundation of the culture is not, and I repeat, is not emceeing. It is not rap. That is not the foundation of the culture. The foundation of the culture is the DJ who plays the breaks and the B-boys or the breakers. That's the foundation of hip hop's culture. Graffiti predates it, MCing postdates it. Okay, so it's the middle of the sandwich. And you know, you have two low two two slices of bread that, you know, help the sandwich stick together. But it's the meat of the sandwich <clears throat> that we want to talk about. And it's that sound that Randy is speaking about, right? So he he talks about a certain sound. Let's check it out again. A certain sound. And a certain movement to that sound. This goes back to the plena. Goes back to the bomba. Goes back to the dancer. You know what I'm saying? Go back to Palenque. Go back to all, all these Latin, these Afro Latin, Afro Caribbean movements. And so the sound. 
documentary will focus on what that sound is. And that sound has a root. That's what we need to understand. The sound has an original root. There is a root to the sound. And that root is Africa to the Caribbean. Okay? And so it is in the Caribbean, as my man Silos Conga, you know, I'm sure he's in the chat, so he can he can break down some of that. But it's in the Caribbean that things are different. Okay, it's in the Caribbean. And when I speak of the Caribbean, <clears throat> I'm speaking about places like Cuba. I'm speaking about places like Puerto Rico. I'm speaking about places like Santo Domingo. I'm speaking about places like Haiti. Okay, these are the <clears throat> these are the islands that I'm talking about. Okay, and it's that sound. Again, the root is Africa, but when they get to the 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 Caribbean islands, okay, there is a different thing that is about to happen. Okay, now keep in mind the foundation. And so Randy, you know, breaks it down and says, you you see this in, in, in Bomba, you see this in Plena, okay, you see this, this is prevalent in the Caribbean. Okay, it's not prevalent. In the U.S., because at, at that point, there is no U.S. So it's, it's prevalent in the Caribbean. And it's that sound of what sound? It's the sound of the conga. It's the sound of the bongo. It's the sound of the timbale. It's the sound of the clave. Okay? It's the sound of the instruments that the Africans and the native Taino Indians of these islands had. Okay, so <clears throat> when we talk about bomba, we see that cipher happening. We see the, 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 the circling of the drums and the drum is playing to the dancer and the dancer is playing to the drum. There is a, there's a foundation to this, okay, which lends to what would later become known as the breaks, and we'll get to that in a minute. But let me keep going, let me keep going, let me keep going. I was able to bring a sensibility of not just the known break beats, but also Latin records that spoke volumes to the same sort of ethos that the break beats had. And so you hear Bobito Garcia, <clears throat> and for those of you that don't know, who Babito Garcia is, he is the, um, the co-host, the host, the founder <laughs> of, uh, and I'm not exactly sure if he's the founder, but I know that he is um, part of the Stretch and Babito show. He's a director in his own right. He's done numerous documentaries. He's a, um, a, 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 a hip hop connoisseur and, um, you know, a DJ who, who specialized um, and a lot of the b-boy breaks. And so he's talking about not only do we do we see the sound that we're talking about within the b-boy breaks or the anthems, right? Let's keep this in mind. Let's keep one thing in mind. The records that would be used, that would be created, that would be made were just records. They did not make them as breaks. Okay, so the Incredible Bongo Band <clears throat> did not make Apache to become a break. They just made a record. Whoever it is, they simply made a record. And so those records that we're talking about, you know, Apache, Just Begun, Yellow Sunshine, Son of Scorpio, um, Give It Up, Turn It Loose, uh, what else? Dance to the drummer's beat. Super sperm. Um, and, and, and there's more that just slip in my mind. But those anthems were just regular records. It is the hip hop DJ who takes it and wants to create 
and lengthen that section of the record. And this begins with one man. This begins with one person, universally across the board. And the pioneers will acknowledge this. This begins with cool DJ Herc. This is where the foundation comes. Okay, <clears throat> so him being from the Caribbean, okay, being from, the, if you didn't know that, there were, you know, Tainos on the island of Jamaica as well. So there were all these, the Indians were all over the, the Caribbean. You know, Puerto Rico is the West Indies. Okay, so this West Indian island, Jamaica, where Ku Herc is the beginner. He starts this. And Bobito is talking about the, the traditional breaks, but then he, he talks about even the breaks that a lot of people didn't know that would come from, you know, record labels like Fania Records and these obscure records that were viewed as Latin records, Latin music. And when I say Latin, we're not talking about the language Latin. We're talking about the people of these Caribbean islands that would create this music. Mainly, again, it's Cuba, Boricua, Borinquen, Puerto Rico, um, Santo Domingo, Haiti, those islands, mainly, but mainly, let's be honest, let's be real, mainly, it is really Cuba and Puerto Rico that are foundational, right? And so we, we see that these breaks, and there's one person who does this, and his name is Cool. Herc. Now, when we talk about Cool Herc, there was an interesting, there was an interesting video that was recently put out on a channel, and they were showing Cool Herc in a panel discussion a number of years ago, and they asked him, <clears throat> they asked him the question, "Where does this begin?" Where does this begin? And he says, first of all, it begins with me. This is her talking about himself, you know. And then he says, the foundation of this is the West Indies. Th that's what he says. And I'm paraphrasing. But the foundation of this is the West Indies. Now, this is the first time we're hearing Herc on record, on video, with him speaking on the video and saying that. So this comes from the foundation of doing this comes from Herc and the West Indies, again, by way of Africa to the Caribbean islands, and it's this sound that we get, right? So we have this, this particular sound that we get from the... African diaspora, okay? Now let's go into the next part of the video. Check this out. And then you had the Mambo era, like I said before, the whole Afro-Latin jazz fusion, uh, which predates a lot of the funk. So DJ Talim, who is with us in the chat tonight, shout out to DJ Talim, he brings out and these are just snippets, y'all. This thing is, is monumental. But these are just snippets. And he brings out the mambo craze. Okay, the mambo craze, which is what you see at places like the Palladium. And it is those bands that are Cuban, Puerto Rican, and African American. The members of those bands right, are playing at the Palladium, um, and they're playing mambo music. They're playing, they're playing the breaks before the breaks were even known to be the breaks. They're playing. This is what mambo dancers would go to, to do, to hear the go-off, to hear the Latin descarga, the go-off. That's what they went to the Palladium to see. And so you had people like 
Mario Bausa, you had people like Chano Pozo, you had people like Tito Puente, you had people like Machito and his Afro Cubans. Now that's funny because Machito and his Afro Cubans was not really made up of many Cubans. In fact, <clears throat> the rhythm section was Puerto Rican. There were African Americans in that band. Of course, Machito himself and Bausa were Cubans, right? But it's these guys that are doing what is known as the Latin Descarga. And it is the African American bands, the big bands, who, by the way, Puerto Ricans were part of. It is the big bands that, <clears throat> that you see, the big bands start to hear about primarily one group, which is really Machito and his Afro-Cubans. Hmm. You got to understand something, that that was the first time that any band used the term Afro-Cuban. He was not ashamed to admit that he was black. Okay, he was a black Cuban, but he wasn't afraid. His African ancestry is what he was not afraid to do, to show. So the, the, the musicians would come from places like Birdland, the jazz musicians, and they would come and they would sit in. You, you would have people like Sammy Davis Jr. hanging out there. You would have people like Marlon Brando, who is actually gets on the congas and starts to rock out. So you had all these musicians coming to check out what this scene was, and they were blown away by the sound of the clave, by the sound of the, the sound of the clave, the go off of the conguero, the go off of the timbales, when they see Tito Puente going off, doing the descarga, and then seeing the dancers doing mambo. And it just so happens that when you look <clears throat> at these early dancers doing mambo, and then you look at the early rock dancers in New York City in the 70s, Boy, the, the similarities are striking. I'm not suggesting that the rockers got, got rocking from Mambo. I'm suggesting that there is a root to it all. There's a root to it. And so these groups are being seen. And this is the first time now, this is the first time you have to understand something. <clears throat> not one African-American big band utilized the sound of the Afro percussive instruments. Not one. They did not use those instruments. I'm talking again about the conga. I'm talking about the bongo. I'm talking about the timbal. I'm talking about the clave. I'm talking about <coughs> el sencero. I'm talking about those instruments. They did not use them. And so it is Dizzy Gillespie who comes to his bandmate, Mario Bausa, and talks about he's going to start a new band and he wants to incorporate what he called the Tom Toms. He was actually referring to the Congas. And he's introduced to Chano Bozo. And the, the marriage again continues because... You've had blacks and Puerto Ricans doing music together since the early 1900s. Since the early 1900s. And that's going to be shown in the documentary. We're going we're gonna to prove that fact in the documentary. But so they get together and they create the song called Manteca. And then it's on and popping from there. Because also the Latin musicians are now going to Birdland to rock out with the jazz musicians. And so there is this, again, this continual marriage of cultures. And the root of that marriage is Africa. Okay, we understand our African roots. Okay, we understand who we are. And so that is the mambo craze and the sound of that. 
would be eventually utilized by, and I'm not even giving a lot away. I'm just sort of just giving us, I'm not even giving a lot away. I'll just say you have to, when the, document, when the documentary drops, you're going to see what I'm saying. And I'm going to show, we are going to show and prove that there is a foundation to what would become known as the breaks for the B-Boys. There was a foundation there. And so, yeah, let's get into this part. Now, you're going to hear Johnny Juice, Public Enemies DJ, um, Vice President of TBB, he's going to talk about the instruments. The Afro-Caribbean and Afro-Latin sound, the Quavi, the cowbell, the Gascana, which is the sound of the Bumbale. So he talks about those same instruments that I'm talking about, right? Let me let me be clear about something. Automatically, when we say the Latin breakdown, people have this assumption that what we're saying is that on those records, Apache, Give It Up, Turn It Loose, that that that, that they think what we're saying is that there were Latinos playing on those records. That's not what we're saying. Some of the records had Latinos, but these are mainly African and white rock bands who are playing this music. I'm sorry, African-American and white rock bands who are playing this music. Okay, so it has nothing to do with <clears throat> whether well, conga player on that. He's not, he's not Puerto Rican. He's not Cuban. He's black. So, you know, how did you influence? You're missing the point. Once again, let's go back to Birdland and let's go back to the Palladium. The African-American jazz musicians were going to the Palladium to visualize and hear the way that these Latin groups, these Afro-Cuban, Afro-Caribbean groups were rocking out. And so the African-American bands, this sound made its way into funk. It made its way into disco. It made its way into the first early um, iteration of rap music. It, you can't escape it. It is there. And so it has nothing to do with whether the conguero was black or Spanish. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the sound that they wanted in that record, in that group is reminiscent of the sound that was being played at places like the Palladium. Palladium wasn't the only place. So this is what we're talking about. So when you hear, once again, you know, the misconception, when you hear John Griggs playing on Give It Up, Turn It Loose, Johnny Griggs was exposed before he was with James Brown's band. He was part of Latin bands. He was part of salsa bands, okay? This is before he's with James Brown. So he's already, this is an African-American who is already exposed to the sound of this rhythm, okay? And I understand in the James Brown cut, which is Give It Up, Turn It Loose, he's playing a palo rhythm. That palo rhythm comes by way of Cuba. Okay, it is African in its influence, but it comes by way of Cuba. That's where it comes from. So he's playing, he's rocking out on that rhythm. And then we just we just saw, and I just dropped that video on the new James Brown song that was, you know, unearthed, that was done in 1970. And you hear at the beginning of this song, you hear the guaguanco. I'm gonna say that right. I'm, my Spanish is not great. The guaguanco. You hear that rhythm. Listen, that's not an African, that's not an African American rhythm. Black musicians did not play that rhythm. That comes from the Caribbean. Those are Afro-Caribbean rhythms. Guaguanco is an African Caribbean rhythm. Okay, so he's playing it in his song. So don't tell me that James Brown was not influenced by Latin music. Most bands were, and you hear it in the music that they played. Not all of it, but especially the ones that we deem as the B-Boy anthems. 
That's what we got to understand. It had nothing to do with whether <coughs> whether they were Latin or they weren't Latin, whether they were Puerto Rican or Cuban or black. It had nothing to do with that. For instance, when you hear Jimmy Castor on, you know, Just Begun, you hear a couple of things happening, right? But you definitely hear what Johnny, um, what Johnny Rosado, um, Johnny Juice said about the cascara, which is the side of the timbale. That's the side of the timbale. Then you hear him on the cowbell. That's that's those are Latin rhythms. And then you hear the rock side of it with that guitar that you hear in Just Begun. Right? So it is a, again a blend. All right? And don't tell me that Jimmy Castor was not influenced by Latin music and Latin people. He lived in Harlem. Don't tell me that. You cannot tell me that. In fact, here's an interesting fun fact. If you go to Michael Wayne TV and you will see there is a video that shows DJ FaZe and Green Eyed Genie talking about what was happening in their in, in, in Bronxdale in one of the sections. OK, and they talked about how the Latins, the Latinos were out there playing all the time. And he talked now. Now, Faye says, you know, the incredible bongo band was out there playing and this is what they were playing. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 doom. They're actually saying this on their video. That is not a black rhythm in the sense of African American bands are playing this. No, that is a Afro Caribbean rhythm. That comes from Latinos. That comes from us, if I could say that, right? That's where that comes from. So these bands that are playing this music and you and you hear it on you know, um, the name of the new James Brown song, I think is called, um, we got to change. I believe it's called, we got to change. And you hear it right in the beginning of that. Okay. <laughs> Listen, people can deny it all they want, but the fact remains, James Brown was influenced by African as well as Afro-Cuban rhythms. And when I say Afro-Cuban, I'm not talking about only Cuban people, okay? That is the name of the genre. These are Cubans, these are Puerto Ricans who are rocking out together. So the Palladium did not just have Cubans. They had uh, Cubans, they had Puerto Ricans, and they had African Americans, okay? And the dancers there were <clears throat> Cubans, Puerto Ricans, African Americans, um, Italians, Jews, I mean, rocking out to the original Latin Descarga. That is, those are facts, right? So let's keep going a little bit. And this is what Silos Conga says. And this is what I mean. When we're talking about the bedrock of New York City, we are talking about, when we're talking about the bedrock of New York City, New York City is a melting pot. And listen to what Silos Conga says in the trailer. Watch this. Let me bring it back a little bit, just a little bit. Let's do that. All right. There's no way you could be brought up in those five boroughs walk in the 70s, 60s and 70s, walk around the street and not and not run into somebody playing congas in the street. So he says there's no way that you could grow up in New York City in the 60s and 70s and not hear groups of people playing congas in the streets. It is what you heard. It is what you heard. It was the natural um, sound of the city. You heard cars, you heard honking cars, and you heard, you heard, you know, you heard funk, you heard soul, you heard Latin music. That's what you heard in New York City, especially in the Bronx. Okay, so that just, that just needs to be um, plain and clear. And once again, let me say this. Let me say this. This documentary is so important when it comes to information. It is so important. Once again, go ahead and start sharing this 
on your timelines. Share this on your Twitter. Share this on your Instagram. Share this on your Facebook. Let people know we are live now talking about the upcoming documentary, um, The Latin Breakdown. So you, you, you just heard this in the city. This was the natural uh, progression of things. Let's get those likes up, y'all. We got about 40 people up in the up in here. Let's get those likes. We should have about 40 up. Come on, y'all. Help me out. If you haven't hit that like button, just boom, it takes a quick second. Boom, hit that. Boom, hit that. It just makes the algorithm go a little bit more and more people will hear it. Um, and then we go into, we have Co Rodriguez who starts to talk about Latinos, this. Latinos, primarily Puerto Ricans, always played a major role in hip-hop culture unequivocally since day one so cole rodriguez um listen i, I want to say i want to i'm going to go back a minute i want to go right because it's not it's going to end right now so puerto ricans are not guests in the house of anybody certainly not in the house of hip-hop we were there from the beginning we helped develop it we formulated it in some cases and so you heard two people Cole Rodriguez, who in my opinion is a juggernaut in the culture of hip hop. If you don't know who Cole Rodriguez is, you need to look him up. You need to look up Cole Rodriguez. But then we have a 76 year old man. Most of you know him from the last poets by the name of Felipe Luciano. And by the way, guys, I interviewed these people. I didn't take clips from YouTube. I spoke and, and I did these interviews. Okay, so Felipe says that Puerto Ricans are definitely not guests in the house of hip hop. We've been there from day one. So that wasn't, that wasn't really my point. And, and, and my point is this. When the question is asked, what did you bring from your culture? I'm telling you what we brought from our culture. It is the sound that comes from our culture via Africa. So now people will start to say, oh, but no, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't Latin, that's African. We know, we know. Listen, you, you, can't, you can't jump on Africa when it's convenient for you and then let go of Africa when it's not convenient for you. And we're not doing that. We understand where the foundation is. It is Africa, okay? West Africa to the Caribbean. And it is in the Caribbean that things change. The conga drum <clears throat> is not from Africa. It is an iteration of the African drum, but it is not from Africa. The conga drum is from Cuba. And then Puerto Rico had its own version of the conga drum. But the African drums are more like ngoma drums. They're more like djembe drums. Some, some would say the bata drums. And Silos Conga, he's in here. He could, he could type that out and break that down. But, but the Caribbean is different. Okay, and it's from the Caribbean to the U.S. via the slave trade that now we start to get busy and once again let me stress this this is not this is not meant to be an insult this is just a fact that no african american big bands utilize the sound of the afro percussive instruments let's talk a little bit about preston epps who preston epps plays on the original bongo rock okay P preston epps who's an African-American brother, again, it doesn't matter who they are. But Preston admits that he was influenced by watching Africans play those drums. And in fact, he says <clears throat> he never even heard of, of conga drums or bongo drums in, in the Americas. He never heard of that. He says nobody heard of that until he saw the Africans doing it. Okay, so... Listen, but he's early. But, you know, then he went on to say something that was kind of really weird to me where he, Preston Epps said that, you know, and then later on came Mango Santa Maria. Mango Santa Maria predates Preston Epps. 
Okay, again, we are talking about people who, who do this. This is part of their culture in the sense of coming from these islands. Okay, they do this. This is what they do. So, you know, but, but, but let me be clear. The, the, the B-Boy anthem is not bongo rock, especially Preston Epps' version. The B-Boy anthem is Apache. That is the anthem. That comes in 1973. Yes. Okay. And the conga player on that. So Preston Epps plays on the original version. And then there's an African-American sister who plays on the updated version of Bongo Rock. <clears throat> but then there is a Bahamian brother who plays on Apache. Okay. He plays. He's born and raised in the, in the again, Caribbean. Okay, he plays on Apache. All right, so, you know, um, even the song that you hear in this trailer, the song that you hear in this trailer, let me let you listen. Just listen to the beat. A certain sound and a certain movement to that sound. This goes back to the Plata. goes back to the Bomba. goes back to the Downside. You know what I'm saying? goes back to Bali. All right, that rhythm is... A salsa rhythm. That's a salsa break. And my man, Babito Garcia, turned me on to that break. I believe it's called Cuca la Maraca. And that is the break that they would use. That's a funky Latin percussive break. This is what we're talking about. When we listen to those breaks, that's what we're talking about. That sound. So again, there's the marriage. It comes from the Latin percussions, as well as the, 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 the African-American funk and soul. It is a marriage. Don't tell me that we've made music together since the 1900s. Don't tell me that. And then we made music in, in the 40s. And then we made music. Don't tell me that we've been making music together. But all of a sudden, when it comes to hip hop, and the culture, that that stopped. We couldn't have done that together. That makes absolutely no sense to me. But again, the foundation of the culture are the DJs who played these breaks, who would find these breaks and play them, as well as the B-boys who danced to these breaks. So the, 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 the nutshell is clear. Let me bring up something because I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the word Latin. So a lot of people, you know, they, 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 you know, they, they try to say it ain't Latin, it's African. But let me explain to you what we mean by Latin. We're not talking about the, the Romance language Latin. Okay, we are talking about a people group that comes from the Caribbean islands uh, in the West Indies, okay, who are made up of Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, and Haitians. Let me read something to you. This is interesting. It's called history. <clears throat> 1940s, 1950s. The term Latin music originated from the United States during the growing influence of Latino Americans in the American music market, including pioneers Xavier Cugat in 1940 and Tito Puente in the 1950s and accelerating in later decades. As one author explained the rising popularity from the 1940s, Latin America, the one part of the world not engulfed in World War II, became a favorite topic for songs and films for Americans who wanted momentarily to forget about the, con, uh, the conflagration. I hope I said that right. <laughs> so wartime propaganda for America's good neighbor policy further enhanced the cultural impact. So we have people like Perez Prado compose such famous pieces as Mambo Number no. 5 and Mambo Number no. 8 at the height of the Mambo movement in 1955. This is at the Palladium, what I'm talking about. Perez hit number one on the American charts with a cha-cha-cha version of Cherry Pink and Apple Blossom White. 
uh, El Manicero, known as in English as the Peanut Vendor, is a Cuban song um, composed by Moses Simons. I think I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Together with um, Guantamare, uh, Guanta, Guantanama. Ooh, forgive me. Let me pronounce that right. Guantanamera. Guantanamera. Okay, that's how you pronounce it. Guantanamera. All right. It is arguably, arguably the most famous piece of music created by a Cuban musician. The peanut vendor has been recorded more than 160 times and sold over a million copies of sheet music and was the first million selling 78 RPM single of Cuban music. Okay, so you have um, in the 1960s, here we go. The Brazilian bossa nova became widespread in Latin America and later became an international trend led especially by a man named Antonio Jobim. Rock and Espanol became popular with the younger generation of Latinos in Latin America. For example, the, the Argentine band uh, Almendra. The Mexican-American Latin rock guitarist Carlos Santana began decades of popularity. By the late 60s, the Boogaloo boom was coming, and Boogaloo musicians such as Perez Prado, uh, Tito Rodriguez, and Tito Puente released Boogaloo singles and albums. Most of the other groups were young musicians such as Pucho and his Latin soul brothers and Joe Batan. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, I want to I want to look this up right now. Because if I'm not mistaken, let me see. I'm going to type something in. Um, no, 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 that's not his name. Um, Johnny, uh, Johnny Griggs, uh, Pucho. Okay. So, yeah, so Pucho, so Johnny Griggs was part of Pucho and his Latin, uh, and his Latin soul brothers. He was part of that group. Okay. So again, when we talk about Latin, a lot of people have this misconception that we're talking about the Romance language, that we're talking about, uh, we are talking about the Caribbean. We're talking about, when we talk about the Latin breakdown, and listen, what we're talking about is the breakdown of the record for the B-Boy anthem specifically. If you hear that and you can't hear what we're talking about, I would have my hearing checked because it is obviously there. And it sounds exactly like what they were playing at the Palladium. It sounds exactly like what Tito Puente would play. What This is why you have Puente playing on what the first Sugar Hill record, the, the first Sugar Hill album. Okay, Sugar Hill Groove. This is why the breaks, you have, I want to remember his name. What's his name? Oh my gosh. Andrina, help me. Who plays on the breaks for Curtis Blow? Um, the timbalero, okay? Jimmy Delgado, okay? So this is why you have that sound. This is why when you have Pumpkin creating the, the, the new sounds for the records of Enjoy, this is why you hear that in um, the, the love rap. This is why you hear the congas in the love rap. This is why you heard Si Los Congas at age 17, okay, in the studio, with the funky four plus one more, and he's playing on rapping and rocking the house. Turn on that record and listen to it. The first person you hear is Silos Congas. And I interviewed him, and he's already let me know that was a Latin slash African slash Afro Caribbean rhythm. Okay, that was what that rhythm was. So, you know, when we talk about the Latin breakdown, I mean, you have to be open-minded enough to say, you know what, I hear it. And stop with, we have to get away from the colorism thing. That if, 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 if Latinos are not playing it, then, that, then it's not Latin. Just like with the, the new James Brown song. You know, well, there ain't nobody Latino in that song. That, that, so that's not Latin. That's African. No. No. 
Guanguanco, Guangua, I keep saying that wrong. Guaguanco, there it is, is Caribbean. It's Afro Caribbean. Okay? Latinos play that. Okay? That's not, that doesn't come from African Americans. That sound comes from us. And James Brown heard that sound and wanted to implement it in his song. There's nothing wrong with that. This doesn't mean that he implemented it in every song. He implemented it in certain songs. And it just so happens that the songs that he implemented it were, were used as some of the b-boy anthems. These, these are facts. These are facts that cannot be argued with. These are facts that cannot be argued with. All right, let's get those likes up. So I'm sure we got a lot of people, um, you know, I'm sure we got a lot of people in the, in the, in the comments. I'm going to entertain some questions. I just feel like entertaining some questions. But, but let me say again, this documentary, let, let, let me stop there. Let me point you to the first documentary which as far as I'm concerned, is the best, most thought out, most um, detailed documentary to date by an independent filmmaker, me, to me, that's, it is the most important documentary. So that one is called Hip Hop is from the Bronx, okay? It's a documentary about New York City street culture. And I encourage you to go watch that. Andrina can put up the link for you. Hip Hop is from the Bronx. Um, that one's pretty lengthy, but it goes through every element. We, we name dates and bring people in there. But we first of all debunk, right from the gate, that hip hop comes from the South. We, we debunk that, okay? <laughs> Listen. No one culture created hip-hop. No one culture created that. People within different cultures created that. And they didn't create it on one day and one night. This was, this was, this was a, 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 a birthing. This, this, this wasn't created on one day. Okay? It, it doesn't come together. It doesn't even come together until after the MCs. And then it's not till the 80s that it's labeled hip hop culture. <laughs> culture. Because now all of the puzzle pieces are together. Now, the graffiti writing, the DJs, the B boys, and the MCs. Before that, it was just the jams and we're trying to figure this thing out. So when they say Herc is the father of hip hop culture, no, mm, Herc is the founder of the, the spark that would light the wick and set that thing in motion. He's the father of the merry-go-round. He's the father of what would, what would become the way the breaks were played. He's the father of introducing that to the B-boys. But he's not the father of emceeing. He's not the father of graffiti. He's the father of that. He's the father of that. And he was a graffiti writer. He was. And he was a DJ. Okay, so Herc is... The foundation of it. He is the foundation of it. Can I read something to you that I thought that was very interesting? And uh, shout out to my man, Joe Conzo. Um, his beautiful work. This, this is a beautiful work. Shout out to my man, Joe Conzo, for sending me this beautiful work. I want to read something to you in an interview that was done in here. Um, if you give me a minute to find it. And I thought I was reading through this today. This is a wealth of knowledge. Oh my goodness. 
This book is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to try and keep this book in the best condition that I can keep it. I might try to, I might even try to find a box to just house it in because I want this thing to last. This is a collector's edition. So I want to read you something that was said. And, and in this book, wow, do you see black and brown throughout this book. When you look at the pictures of the jams, I mean, I could count the room full of Puerto Ricans, full of blacks. I want to read you something from Grandmaster Kaz. And let me find it. Please forgive me. I'm looking for it now. But y'all keep on the conversation in the comments. And if you have any questions for me, please um, direct that. Um, you know, whether you put, you know, question for, for, for D. And then Andrina can go back and bring it back up. I want to find this, this piece that Kaz uh, brings out and some of the things that he's talking about in this piece. And would you know it? I can't find it now. That stinks. I should have held it. But let me, let me, I'm going to find it. 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 Okay, let me see. It is. Please forgive me. Keep going. Keep talking. Keep debating. Keep loving on one another. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead and share this. Let people know we're live. Let people know we're on. See, it's funny that when you do research, the more that you do it, the more that you dig, the more that you find. So I want to find this piece right now. And this is an interview that was done in Joe Conzo's book with Grandmaster Kaz. Um, by the editor of this book, I believe. Please forgive me. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Don't go nowhere, y'all. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. Don't go nowhere. I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Let's show you something. And this is a great interview. Oh, come on. Where is this? <laughs> I can't find it. Okay, here we go. Okay, I got to go backwards. Let me go backwards. Let me find it. Should have been right there. Hold on. All right, here it goes. So... Johan Kugelberg is the person who is doing this interview. And he asked him a couple of questions. Let me see if I can find it. I thought it was very interesting. And we've heard Cass say this before. So... Johan, we're going to call him JK, he asked Grandmaster Kaz this. Was there an awareness of the Jamaican tradition of toasting of the sound system? Grandmaster Kaz said, we never really realized that that, that was Herc's background and that's where the large sound system came from. And that the DJ was the MC over there and the MC was the DJ. It is an opposite, but it's the same thing that we do. But we had no idea till later on, until reggae started to play bigger, a bigger role in popular music. So he goes on, which of the original fellas had Jamaican heritage? 
Um, I know Herc and Flash, and he talks about Herc and Flash. Um, but this is what I want to say. Uh, it, it's a New York, so J, JK is asking him, it's a New York block party, and into that New York block party was brought the power of the Jamaican sound system. And GMC, Grandmaster Cass, says, exactly. Hip-hop brought that. Prior to that, it didn't matter um, you got little speaker as long as you could hear the music out there. There wasn't the, the thing of having the large sound system. Herc brought that to the table. He set the standard. JK says, in your opinion, who was the first to follow Herc's lead as far as others competing sound systems go? And Grandmaster Kaz says, Baron and Breakout, they had the mighty Sasquatch sound system. Um... And and J.K. says, yeah, that was fantastic. And then Flash says, yeah, but you have to understand. Um, uh, so J.K. asked him this question. As far as just the idea of break beats and break DJs, who do you see as the true pioneer of that? Grandmaster Kaz says, cool Herc. And so, I mean... It is, it is clear as day that the Caribbean as a whole played a major role in the influences that would come to be known as hip hop's culture, okay? From the Latin descarga and those b-boy breaks, the go off. That's what descarga means. It means to go off, to let loose, okay? It is a jam session. Now, somebody would say, well, but, well, jazz does that. Jazz, each, each person gets to jam out on their instrument. But b-boys are not jamming. They're not dancing to that. They're dancing to the Latin descarga, the go off with these particular breaks you don't hear them playing jazz records as breaks and b-boys dancing to them. You know, doom, 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 doom. They're not, no. They're dancing to a specific sound. That is the b-boy breaks that contain the original sound of the Latin descarga. Documentary is going to be off the charts, y'all. Documentary is going to be off the charts. And I'm not saying this because I made it. I'm saying this because of the people involved. The people involved made this. They made this thing pop. And your eyes are going to be opened. There's going to be so much pride as far as Latinos in hip hop once and for all. And we should have pride now. But, you know, it, it's going to be what it is. I'm taking some questions. Let me get some questions. Let me get some questions. Let me get some questions. Uh, yeah, Jason Ferrer. I don't know. I have a Puerto Rican grandfather, but these are lies, Dr. Colon is saying. So, Jason, you can't just simply say I'm lying without backing it up with a fact. What am I lying about? Tell me what I'm lying about. That is, the, that, that is a funny statement. What am I lying about? Okay, what am I lying about? Tell me what I'm lying about. Now, now you don't have to agree with it, you, you, but to call somebody a liar, produce those facts. Yeah, JG, ask him that. Ask him that. Ask him that. That James Brown was doing Spanish music. I didn't say James. See, Jason, you're not listening. Let's get this. Let me let everybody hear this. Jason just accused me of saying James Brown was playing Spanish music or Latin music. I didn't say that. Nobody heard me say that. Though there is a song called Please, Please, Please that he does. I believe it's in 1974 or 75 where he plays that in a remix in total salsa. In case you didn't know. But I didn't say James Brown was playing Latin music. I said he, he was inspired by the sound of the guaguanco that you hear in the new record that just released. He uses that sound. I didn't say he was playing Latin music. See, people don't listen. They listen with their emotions. Listen with your head. Listen to what I'm saying. You didn't hear anything I said. 
obviously. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. An African is definitely in us. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, so the Blue Oval 302. My question is, how do you work with the time or the job to make sure you are not going to be able to get it done by the time you are going to be there? I don't even know what that means. Maybe that wasn't for me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, who was Pucci Costello who played... I don't know who that is. Um, Jaquan says it, it's Spoonie G's brother. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me see. Anybody got any questions for me? Let me know. For Dr. For Doctor D. Let me know. Anybody got any questions for me? And guys, I left. I just gave you a smidgen. I just gave you a smidgen. Wait till it releases. I just gave you a smidgen. Way to the religion. You skipped over my question. So Lock Vegas 05, what was your question, bro? Let me let me let me have that question. Um uh, let me see. Lock. Let me see that question. I can't see because it's going so fast, but I'm gonna take a couple of questions. Um Lock Vegas, okay, toasting and the sound system narrative. What was your question, Lock Vegas? What was your question? Okay. Um, let me see. What was your question, Lock Vegas? Let me see what your question is. Uh, let me see what your question is, Lock Vegas. Andrina, what's your breakdown? <laughs> okay, Lock Vegas says Herc, st Herc stated that those things have nothing to do with hip hop. Well, again, in an, a recent interview that was done on the channel formerly known as Michael Wayne TV, you can look at their last video and you can hear Herc himself tell you that the foundation of hip hop, the foundation of what he did, is the West Indies, primarily Jamaica. He says that out of his own mouth. Okay, so I, you know what? I, I'm just going by what he said, okay? And everybody else, from Kaz to Red Alert to Melly Mel to the pioneers will tell you, to Charlie Rock, they will all tell you Herc is the foundation. Herc is the foundation, okay? That sound system culture is sound clash culture. The sound clash culture began in 1952 in Trenchtown. Okay, what was the sound system culture? What was the sound clash culture? Is where the DJs would pull up with their sound systems, a mic and a turntable, not two turntables, a mic and a turntable, and they would battle sound system against sound system. I have a great video resource on the channel called the Jamaican Sound System. I want you to go watch that because it, I show you the examples. That was how hip hop battled in its beginnings. Okay, it was not skill against skill for the DJs. It was sound system against sound system. In fact, the sound systems of Jamaica in those early years of the 60s, they were naming their sound system. So Cool Herc comes to America and he calls his sound system the Herculoids. Okay, he names his sound system. The next people that name theirs is the mighty Sasquatch. They call it. That's Baron and Breakout. Okay, that comes from Jamaica. The naming of the sound systems, the sound clash culture, the battling sound system to sound system comes from Jamaica. That does not come from the U.S. Those are facts. Those are facts. Those are facts. Okay, where did Herc get his sound system from? I don't know that. I don't know that. Okay, I don't know that. All I know is that the people who went to Herc parties said that his sound system was second to none. 
His sound system was second to none. Cool DJ D has said in his article that I have pointed out numerous times that Herc is before Mario. His sound system was second to none. The, the, the Herculoid sound system. But I don't know where he got it from. Okay? I can't, I can't say where he got it from. Okay, cool DJD. Yes, Lock Vegas. Cool DJD. Look up the article um, from Troy L. Smith. You can look it up. Rock the Bells, Troy L. Smith, Cool DJD article. Okay, that is where is got it from. From he got it from Cool DJD. What? He got his sound system from Cool DJD. Who told you that? Where'd you get that from? Cool DJD made Herc's sound system. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. No, Lock Vegas. He did not get his sound system from Cool DJD. He did not get his sound system from Cool DJD. Who told you that? Who told you that? And don't tell me Cool D says it on the interview. He didn't get his sound system from Cool DJD. You know. And I, I, I understand. Here's what I understand. The contradictions are numerous when it comes to that story. So in one interview, Cool D says, Herc copied what we were doing. Herc came and saw I had a GLI, so he went and bought a GLI. Herc saw I had this, these amps, so he went and bought these amps. But then in another interview, he says that Herc bought his sound system from him. Okay, Cool D is saying two different things. So I, I don't, you know, I don't really, I don't really know about that, but I definitely know he did not buy his sound system from Cool D. Yeah, Cool D also says that Herc's sound system was weak and cheesy. Herc had the bet. All the pioneers that went to Herc's parties know Herc's sound system was second to none. It was the clearest. It was the loudest. It blew everybody out the water. The Herculoids. Herc started with, with house monitors. Who told you that? Who told you that? The guys from Bronxdale? Come on, man. The guys from Bronxdale told you that? Well, everybody else that went to Herc's parties, in fact, I'm going to call Raheem and ask Raheem, who went to Herc's parties. I'll ask him. I'm asking people who went to the parties. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the same questions get asked over and over again. We answered them. Let's stick to the breaks. We already answered them. Let's talk about what I brought out. Let's talk about the sounds that come from the palladium that ended up in the breaks. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what I said. Stop going all over the place. That's what you do. Why not address the Combat Jack interview? I didn't watch the Combat Jack interview. Uh, no, he didn't. He said it was clear, but it was monitors. Uh, okay, whatever you say. Um, Cochlear Rock, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. They're, they're going somewhere else to shift the conversation. This is about the Latin breakdown. Let's talk about the Latin breakdown. Let's not talk about Herc. Let's talk about sound systems. Let's talk about the Latin breakdown. From Africa to the Caribbean to the U.S. via the slave trade to the Palladium and that sound and no African-American big bands utilized the sound of the Afro-percussive instruments until Dizzy Gillespie and Chano Pozo with Manteca and then all of a sudden all the bands start to utilize that same sound and they made it into the, the records that were used for the b-boy breaks. Let's deal with that. Those are facts. Let's deal with that. Let's talk about that. If not, I'm going to be out. If not, I'm going to be out. OK. 
Okay. Uh, did you find those early B-Boy flies you were talking to her about Tariq about? No, I told I already told everybody. I told Tariq. I told them that, that, that no, that was a mistake I made. What I saw was the um I saw the anniversary flyers with the, the B-Boys were not on flyers in the 70s. Okay, the B-Boys were not on flyers in the 70s. What I saw were anniversary flyers of B-Boy flyers that were their anniversaries, which is TBB and so on. So um, that has nothing to do with the subject, bro. Let's get to the subject. You can't answer the Latin breakdown, so you want to run everywhere else. Let's deal with this. Let's deal with this. Okay, here we go. Oh, you want to steal our culture. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, the Latin breakdown. Stay on topic. That's it. Thank you, Ran. Thank you, Ran. Yeah, thank you, Ran. Latin breakdown. That's what we're talking about. Ask me about the Latin breakdown. Ask me about that. Explain to me how that that rhythm. In the new James Brown song, where'd he get that from? What was he inspired from? Where'd he hear that from? You got to explain that. Let's talk about that. Okay. Okay, we're not talking about the DJs in Brooklyn. Let's just get off of that. Uh, let's get off of that. JG, I'm not going to get Raheem on. Raheem wants to charge money. <laughs> I ain't getting him on. I ain't got no money. Uh... Here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's go. So I'm going to look at a couple of more and then we're going to be out of here. Y'all trying to write black and brown people out of history when they're still alive. That's why these breaks were early Latin origin, were clearly Latin origin. These early DJs were clearly Jamaican and Barbadian. Absolutely, Thomas Breeze. Thank you so much. Let's deal with the Latin breakdown. That's what we're talking about. The Latin breakdown. Okay, it doesn't diminish us to be truthful. Okay. They played Love is Love is the Message in Brooklyn, not Breaks. Yes. Yes. Truth teacher, we need to emphasize the fact that all music artists take inspiration from different cultures. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we are talking specifically, Truth, about... The Latin Breakdown and the B-Boy Anthems. That's what we're talking about. Okay, the breaks that the DJs played that had these Latin Afro-percussive instruments in them. That's what we're talking about. Can anybody speak to that? I gave you numerous amounts of evidence. And the documentary is going to give you more. Stop using straw man arguments and let's deal with that topic specifically. Let's go with that topic. Okay. Salsa, Calypso, Reggae, Rhythm, and Blues, Master Mix, those number one tunes. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Let's go. Play that beat. Play that beat. Uh. Mm. Yeah, guys. So again, we we just so I'm a, I'm a, I'm about to just drop it. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna tune out. I gotta get ready for work tomorrow. But the Latin breakdown, hip hop's Latino connection coming spring 2024. Please share the link of the trailer. Um, go back and watch this, share this with somebody, but it is what it is, and what, what, th that's what I want to talk about, the Latin breakdown. That's what I want to talk about, okay? That's what I want to talk about, all right? But it has always been, one more time, let me just say this as I continue to say this, okay? As I continue to say this, Caribbeans, African Americans, Latinos, mainly Puerto Ricans, Okay? We are the bedrock foundation of, of hip hop's culture, okay? The sound of the breaks that is the foundation when it comes to the B-Boys comes from 
the Latin descarga. It comes from the Latin percussions with the African-American funk and soul. The marriage is still happening. We have always done this together. And that is our legacy to the culture of hip hop. It is the sound of the breaks that you hear. Anybody listening to those breaks, like the breaks we mentioned earlier, and you don't hear that, I don't know what to tell you. Then you just, you're just choosing to just not hear that. Okay? I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Ah, what well, came first, the b-boy or the breaks? The breaks, the music, the sounds, the sounds. All right. Randy says, funk, soul, disco, early hip hop, all are based on the Latin breakdown. Yes, 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 yes. It is what it is. God bless you guys. You guys have a great night. Listen, I'm going to tune out. Thank you, Andrina. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Thank you, everyone that is part of the documentary. Remember, spring 2024, it's coming soon. Keep your boy in prayer as I have to edit this thing through. And we will talk in the next episode, but share this. Please share the trailer. Go and watch the trailer. Don't forget to also go and check out my other channel for your spiritual nourishment. Go to Urban Exegesis and check that out. And I will talk to you in the next episode. One more time, in the words of Don Cornelius, peace, love, and soul. Let's go.